Welcome back to Studio 10, everybody. It's time once again for our weekly segment, On Your Health, where we discuss important medical and health topics with the doctors of Florida Medical Clinic, the Bay Area's first clinic to merge both primary care physicians and specialists all under one roof. And today we welcome Dr. Samir Nagamia and Dr. Fong Q. Ong to tell us more about the role of interventional cardiology in patient care. Welcome, doctors. Thank you for having us. Now, you are both interventional cardiologists, is that right? What, what is the difference between that and just a standard uh, run-of-the-mill cardiologist? Well, an interventional cardiologist is one who's gone undergone further training, and they specifically treat blockages in different various arteries throughout the body, including the heart, as well as the legs. But not just limited to the heart. That's correct. Okay. Okay, so uh, when we talk about other parts of the body, where are the most common places that you would find these kind of blockages? That's a great question. Uh, typically, we find blockages in any of the extremities of the body, but usually in the legs and in the, uh, the feet. Mm -hmm. What specific illnesses do you, do you target that some of our viewers might either be mm -hmm. experiencing or be familiar with, at least? Well, we definitely treat heart attacks and blockages in the heart arteries, that's probably one of our main, main goals. But we also treat the blockages that are in the lower extremities, meaning the legs. And so if, they, if people get um, cramping when they walk and things like that, we can, we can go in and see with some different types of tests if they have blockages in those arteries and different ways that we could possibly treat them. Are there certain conditions that people might have which would make them more susceptible to getting those blockages? There, there certainly are, and they're classic of the same risk factors as we have with coronary artery disease. So in other words, diabetes is a strong risk factor for peripheral uh, vascular disease, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, age and family history is a strong risk factor. What is the difference we've been hearing, I've been watching a lot of the TV commercials that talk about PAD, peripheral artery disease, that, that's what we're talking about Correct. here, right? Okay. So per peripheral vascular disease actually encompasses peripheral arterial disease. Arteries are the blood vessels that take blood from the heart to the rest of the body. And it also encompasses uh, peripheral, vas or, sorry, peripheral venous disease, which the veins bring the blood back. So you can get diseases in both the going out arteries and the returning okay. back veins. Is this a matter of, uh, of hooking someone to a, a machine and, and, and doing a stress test? How, how, do, you, how do you determine what's, what's going on? On internally? Great, great question. So initially, once patients uh, present with complaints of pain and cramping with exercise, we could start off with a non-invasive test, and usually that's called an ABI, or an ankle brachial uh, index. And simply put, it's basically just a blood pressure measurement, which compares the blood pressure in the arm okay. with the blood pressure in the ankles. And typically, in a normal patient, they should be the same. The blood pressure in the ankles? Correct. Huh. I didn't know you could take your blood pressure you, on your you ankles. You absolutely can. Either. Wow. Yep. And, and certainly, if there's any difference in those uh, blood pressure readings, then that's a sign that there might be blockages somewhere in the leg arteries. Sure. Now, what's the, the immediate danger in that? Do, they, do those blockages move to the heart, or do they just stop blood flow in that area? They, they generally stop uh, blood flow in that area. However, um, it's all one system. So if you have blockages in your lower extremities, in the arteries that supply the legs, you can also have blockages in your heart. And that's why peripheral arterial disease is an independent risk factor for coronary artery disease. Okay. So this is something that's necessarily uh, related to senior citizens or so forth. I mean, you can be any age pretty much and, and get this, right? Or who is, who is most likely to, to get something like Sure. This? It, it can occur at any age, but uh -huh. typically it's a disease of the elderly. So it affects anywhere between 8 and 10 million Americans, and usually those are older Americans. So approximately 20% of folks over the age of 70 have peripheral arterial disease, and, and many of them don't even know it. Worst case scenario, say you have peripheral artery disease, or PAD, and it goes untreated. Could, could you lose the limb, or what's, what could happen there? Absolutely. And this is something that's an entity that's called critical limb ischemia, and it generally can actually uh, preempt a amputation. So it can be quite serious if it's not treated early uh, and if we don't address the risk factors associated with it. Now I have to ask this because I know a lot of my ladies out there are probably wondering this. We see all the time that hormones can impact this particular area in some way. Are we at greater risk if we're on birth control pills for something like this or is that a different deal? It, it, it's a little bit different deal than what we're talking about today. We're t uh, specifically today we're talking about diseases in the arteries, but women with on 
on birth control pills and on hormone replacement therapy are at higher risk of developing blood clots in the veins. So, okay. Correct. So that's a different animal altogether. Right. Veins, arteries, I should remember my basic biology. <laughs> All this medical <laughs> stuff, man. It's uh, You guys are so smart. It's crazy. But, but tell us about how, uh, and we ask all the doctors this, about just the benefits from your standpoint and even the patient standpoint of working on, you know, you have specialists and primary care physicians and everybody all under one roof in one location, a tremendous advantage for everyone, correct? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, one of the reasons that uh, I joined Florida Medical Clinic was because of the fact that it's a multi-specialty clinic. So with that, I have quite a few uh, subspecialists, in including the primary care physician who is ex instrumental in the health of a patient. Mm -hmm. And those kinds of things, uh, you know, we have access to the electronic medical record that is, you know, it's phenomenal because I can look to see what 15 other physicians have done with this patient. And it really helps well with uh, not reordering useless tests over and over again and putting subjecting our patients through that. It speeds up the process Absolutely. and you help the patient get better faster. Basically. Absolutely. All right. Well, to learn more about the latest advances in patient care and medical research, visit Florida Medical Clinic online at floridamedicalclinic.com. And while you're there, you can locate the office nearest you, learn about the doctors, and even request an appointment. Thank you, doctors. Thank, Thank you, you for having us. Up next, protecting your home has never been more important. Armor Tech Windows and Doors will tell you why when Studio 10 returns. This segment was sponsored by Florida Medical Clinic.